Welcome to another HitFilm tutorial. I'm Axel Wilkinson from HitFilm.com and in this tutorial I'm going to look at parenting and how it can be used to control the transform properties of layers. Parenting allows one layer to inherit the transform and positioning properties of another layer so that once they're grouped together in a parent-child relationship that family of layers will now behave and move as if it were one object. Parent-child relationships between layers can be assigned using these menus on the timeline under the heading Parent. And you can just open the menu for the layer that you want to be a child and choose another layer to serve as its parent. I'm going to choose Flash 1, which is this effect. So now this yellow muzzle flash here all the way to the left is the parent of this purplish pinkish muzzle flash next to it. So now if I select the parent and I move it, you can see that those two effects move as if they were one object. And the same if I rotate it, you can see that they turn in unison as if I were rotating a single effect. So if I move the parent layer, however I move it, the child mimics that behavior. But if I were to go and select the child layer and move that, you can see that the parent is unaffected and the child still moves on its own. So parenting is essentially a one-way relationship. Moving the child will not affect the parent, but whenever you move the parent, it will directly affect the child. So when a layer is parented, it inherits the transform properties of its parent, with the exception of opacity. If I select our parent layer again and then adjust the opacity of it, you can see that the child remains unaffected from that adjustment. But other than opacity, uh, all of these other transform properties will be directly passed on from a parent layer to any children that are assigned to it. In fact, if I change the parenting on this layer back to none, you can see that our selected layer has an X value of minus 400. And then if I parent that at once again to flash 1, now you can see that that X position has changed from negative to positive, even though the layer hasn't moved. And that's because once you've created a parent relationship, the child layer's position and all the other transform properties display relative to the transform properties of the parent layer. So what this is telling us now is that we are 400 points to the right of the anchor point of our parent layer. Therefore, if we zero this out, rather than moving to the center of the world grid, the layer now moves to the exact same location as its parent layer. And I'm going to reset this to 400 for right now. Thus far, we've only used two layers in our parenting scheme, but you can use more. So if I take these other muzzle flash effects that I've created, I can parent this one to flash 2, and then this last one I will parent to flash 1. And now, if we select flash 1, it's now apparent to all of these other layers. And so, when we reposition it, they will all move together. But if we select flash 2 and move it, you can see that its parent, flash 1, remains unaffected and flash 4 parented to flash 1 is unaffected and only flash 3 which is a child to flash 2 follows it wherever it goes when we move it. So when can parenting be useful? Well one instance is when you're creating an effect that perhaps combines several different effects layers to create the final look. So say we wanted to combine all of these muzzle flashes into a single crazy muzzle effect. Well if we zero out the position for all of the children, and I'm just using tab to move between the fields there after I enter each one. And as we zero these out, they'll all assume the same position as the parent layer. And then we can select the parent layer, and then when we move the parent, all of its child layers stay locked together and move as if they were a single effect. Another instance in which parenting is frequently used is in motion tracking effects. Simon Jones recently did a tutorial on a force lightning effect where he demonstrated nicely how you can add a point and track that point to a specific feature or location in your footage and then 
parent effects to that point to control their movement and make sure that they fit into the scene the way that they're meant to. A third technique where parenting comes in very handy is in creating rigs such as the rig that controls the motion of the camera in this shot. You can see there our effect. We've got that pillar of sparkly particles and our camera is orbiting around that pillar and then dropping down toward the ground as it orbits. And all of that movement is controlled by parenting. If you look at the transform properties for the camera, you can see that there is no movement or change in position actually in the controls for the camera itself. That's all handled by parenting. And so how that's done is if I switch to the top view, there you can see here is that pillar of sparklies and here is our camera. And as we scrub through, you can see the movement that the camera is performing there. And that's all based upon this center point, which is located at the base of that pillar, that effect. And it is keyframed, as you can see here, to rotate. And so as that plays, you can see the rotation being performed by that center point. Okay, so once we have that rotation, now we add an additional point out here where the camera is at. This it serves as the dolly for the camera, so the camera is mounted to this point. But then because there's all of this space between the dolly and the center point, which is its parent, when we rotate its parent, then the dolly is forced to orbit around that point. Now in this case, it's getting closer and closer as it rotates, and that is being controlled by some keyframes in its position property. You might remember that once we've assigned a parent to this dolly point, its zero becomes the location of its parent object. And so we're starting out at a distance of 2,000 points along the z-axis from our parent, and then by the end of our 180 degree rotation, you can see we're only 200 points away. And so with just two keyframes applied to the position of this, controlling the distance between it and its parent, combined with the rotation of its parent object, we're able to very quickly create a fairly complex camera move. Now in this case we also, if we switch to the perspective view, you can see that the angle of the camera relative to the ground is also changing. Here it's looking down toward the effect, and then by the time we get to the end, it's looking up at a pretty steep angle. And that is also controlled by this dolly point using the rotation X. There, just by changing from 24 degrees there to minus 67 in the later keyframe, we get some nice rotation to that so that when we switch back to our active camera, we can keep that effect pretty well in frame throughout the course of that rotation. All right, now one other case where parenting can really come in handy is say you've got this all set up and you've got your camera all set to orbit your effect and then you realize that based on the layout of your scene you need the effect to move. You need these particles to be over here. Well suddenly your camera move is now all out of whack. Your effect is way over there and if we hit play clearly the effect is completely out of the shot. Well that's easily fixed. I'm going to go to the history and undo that movement. And now, because the movement of our camera is all based on this center point and the points that are parented to it, if we parent that center point, and I'm going to do that here, you can actually control the parenting of any layer in its layer properties in addition to these menus on the timeline. Here you get the exact same menu and you can choose what layer you would like to use as a parent. So I'm going to choose the particle simulator so that we're parented to that effect. And then when we select this effect and move it, you can see that the camera is moving right along with it. And the same is true if we go to the perspective view and we move that, you can see how the camera is moving as well. So even though we can move that effect all over the place, and when we go to our active camera view, because now our camera, through those other points that are controlling it, is parented to the effect, no matter where we move the effect, our camera move is still going to be exactly the same as we originally set it up. So that's a very useful application of parenting as well. Okay, well that covers the basics of parenting. 
and some of its practical applications. We have a number of tutorials in the works that are based on uh, showing you how to create specific effects and a lot of them will involve parenting as well so I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you have not already done so and that way as we release new tutorials you'll make sure that you don't miss any of them. Thanks for watching.